Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The 15th of September on Friday, the week of Pentecost 15. C.S. Lewis, 1898, 1963. It's not long, but well, it is clear from many of his sayings that our Lord had long foreseen his death. He knew what conduct such as his in a world such as we have made of this must inevitably lead to. But it is clear that this knowledge must somehow have been withdrawn from him before he prayed in Gethsemane. He could not with whatever reservation about the Father's will have prayed that the cup might pass and simultaneously known that it would not. This is both a logical and a psychological impossibility. You see what this involves? Lest any trial incident to humanity should be lacking the torments of hope, of suspense, anxiety, were at the last moment loosed upon him. The supposed possibility that after all he might, he just conceivably might be spared the supreme horror. There was precedent. Isaac had been spared. He too at the last moment. He also against all apparent probability. It was not quite impossible and doubtless he had seen other men crucified, a sight very unlike most our religious pictures and images. But for this last and erroneous hope against hope, and that the consequent tumult of the soil, the sweat of blood, perhaps he would not have been very man, for to live in a fully predictable world is not to be a man. The prayer, Olive Wyan, 1890, no date of death given. O Lord Jesus Christ, who in the days of thy flesh did steadfastly set thy face to go to Jerusalem, did suffer the agony in the garden and dereliction on the cross, who yet for the joy that was set before thee didst endure the cross, despising the shame, and art set down at the right hand of God, strengthen us when we shrink from unknowing ways. Hold us firmly when we are afraid. Help us to follow thee without swerving to the end. Out of weakness, make us strong lighten our darkness and beat down Satan under our feet and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.